Welcome back. We continue with our development of um, the finite element method for these uh, linear parabolic problems uh, in three dimensions where we have a single scalar unknown. What we've managed to do in the last couple of segments is starting from the weak form, we've written out the strong, uh, sorry, starting from the strong form, we've written out the weak form and arrived as far as the matrix vector equations. Okay, and if you um, have your notes in front of you, you can go back and uh, observe that uh, the form of these final matrix vector equations was the following. Right, the matrix vector equations Right, it takes on the following form. We have this new matrix, the mass matrix M D dot plus K D equals F. Now, in this form of the equations, we know that uh, because of the variational methods we employ, the methods around the weak form, the, uh, the boundary conditions are already embedded in this uh, set of matrix equations, right? Uh, what we do need to account for, however, is the, um, the initial condition, okay? So, uh, whereas we have this uh, uh, linear system of equations, right, essentially an, uh, a, a first order uh, ODE, right? So, this is a first order ODE. ODE being ordinary differential equation, so let me write that out. Right, in our vector unknown D. Okay, now because we've dealt with all this business about, you know, number of nodes in the problem and the number of Dirichlet boundary conditions and so on, I'm going to, as we proceed from here on, uh, just say that D is a uh, vector living in an NS, uh, NDF dimensional space, right? NDF is simply number of degrees of freedom, okay? So those are the number of degrees of freedom we are so NDF is the number of degrees of freedom we are actually solving for. Now, this is a first order ODE and uh, what that implies is that we do need an initial condition which is something we had stated in the strong form of the problem. We just need to um, incorporate it here and that ODE that we are working with is the following. Sorry, that initial condition that we need to work with is the following. D at time t equals zero equals um, the vector of uh, conditions uh, which are obtained by uh, taking u um, naught at the particular location of the corresponding node, okay? And this is all the way down to u naught at x, now written as n d f. Okay. Right. Instead of uh, continuing to number by nodes, we've forgotten all about nodes. Now we're just looking at this linear system of equations where d is in R, uh, belongs to uh, to an n d f um, Euclidean space, and this is what we have for the initial condition. Right. Um, it's convenient sometimes to also often to, to refer to this vector as just D naught, okay? Right, so this is the setting we have. One thing I should mention is that um, whereas we sort of carried through our uh, development of the method by uh, considering a consistent mass matrix, one can also do uh, global lumping. Okay, so a globally lumped matrix, lumped mass matrix, right? 
right? Let's denote it as m sub l for lumped. Okay, um, it can be defined as um, this thing can be defined. Okay, and the way we do that is to simply say that M A B lumped is equal to um, the sum over C of M A C, okay. Um, if a equals b, right, and it is equal to 0 otherwise. All right. Okay, and in some cases the problem is often solved with the globally lumped mass matrix. Okay. So this is um, this is what we needed to complete from the previous uh, from from the work we set out in the previous segment. We'll move on from here and uh, begin looking at uh, the integration algorithms for this class of problems. Okay, and uh, this is going to depend upon time discretization. Okay, the reason for it is that the uh, the form of the matrix vector equation we're working with. Uh, is what we um, call a semi-discrete uh, formulation. And I explained why it is semi-discrete, because we've gone through the discretization in space, but not yet in time. Okay? So now we do time discretization. Now, in a move that may seem a little disappointing to some of you, uh, the time discretization for this sort of problem is done with finite difference methods. Okay? However, the, the nature, the structure of the matrices M, K, and, uh, and the vector F uh, depend upon the finite element method. So even though we're going to use finite difference methods uh, in this um, series of lectures for integration of time-dependent equations, time integration of time-dependent equations, those methods are uh, do continue to be affected by the by the underlying finite element formulation for the spatial part of the PDE. Okay, so this part is going to be finite difference. Finite difference methods. Okay, we, that that's what we're going to use. Now I'll make a remark here which is that a fully space-time Galerkin finite element method does exist, okay? So space-time finite element methods do exist. And they have uh, remarkably good properties as well. These types of methods are based on uh, carrying out integration um, over omega and over the interval 0, comma t. Okay? So these are based actually on a formulation which is now going to look um, well, I, I, I probably shouldn't sit, begin writing this formulation because one will get sucked into the rest of the development. But, but anyway, they, they're based upon integrating over omega and uh, over uh, the time interval. And uh, they, they tend to have very good properties. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, they have properties of the type where uh, uh, the accuracy um, The accuracy with respect to time um, is of higher order than 
what we will be developing here. Right? Accuracy is of higher order than uh, with finite difference methods, FD for finite difference. Um, they do come with a, uh, they do come at a cost though. In particular, one has to develop a finite element mesh over space and time. And this can pose a challenge when one is doing uh, problems that are uh, 3D in space, right? Because then you have a fourth dimension in time, which can get to be a bit of a challenge to visualize, definitely. Uh, at any rate, the methods exist, and they're actually very sophisticated. Okay, so we get back now to our finite difference methods, right? So the nature of the time discretization that we are, we are seeking to carry out is the following. Uh, we are going to divide our time interval into uh, subintervals. So divide our time interval 0 comma t into subintervals. Okay, and these subintervals are 0 comma um, let me do it this way. These subintervals are T0 to T1, T1 to T2. So on until we come finally to um, T. n minus 1 to t n. Okay? So we have all of these subintervals, and uh, what we also imply here, of course, is that t0 or t0 is equal to 0, and t n equals capital T. Okay? So uh, if you look at this, what we've implied is that we've divided our total time interval into capital N subintervals. Right? So clearly here we have N subintervals Okay. The basis of our of the methods that we will develop is the following. Okay. So what we are going to do here is consider a uh, consider an interval t sub little n to t sub n plus 1, okay? Right, where, where of course uh, little n uh, belongs to the uh, integer interval 1 to um, n minus 1, sorry, 0 to n minus 1, okay? So we consider an, an interval of this type. Um, the whole um, basis of our methods is going to be what is sometimes called time stepping. Okay, so time stepping implies right. Time stepping implies that we know the solution at t n, and we want to get to t n plus one. Okay, so time stepping essentially uh, is the following. Knowing uh, the solution at T sub n, find it at T n plus 1. Okay? Right? So we're really sort of hopping along in time. Okay? So if you think about it as uh, Think about it as follows. 
that is the time axis, right. So, we have started here at 0, we want to get as far as t, right. We have t0, t1, right. We have tn and we have tn, t little n plus 1 and here of course we have t capital N. Okay, so the whole idea is that well, I know what what I know everything at t n. How, how do I get to t n plus one? Okay, in order to proceed, uh, and also actually in order to um, later on carry out some analysis, we need to lay down some more notation. Okay, uh, and here is what we will do. So, uh, some more notation. Okay, when I write d at some time tn, what I imply by this notation is the solution vector d if one were able to do exact integration in time. Okay, so this is the time exact solution or the time continuous solution, shall we say. Right? At uh, time at t equals tn. Uh, I am going to stick with the term time exact, sorry. Time continuous is gets gets a little more uh, ambiguous the time exact solution, okay. Uh, and this simply means if we were able to integrate our ODE exactly, right, this is our matrix uh, vector ODE, right, if we were uh, this with, with, with initial conditions. If we had a method to exactly integrate this, then the solution that we would get at a given time Tn would be this, okay. In contrast, I will use d sub n, okay, to denote the, the algorithmic solution at Tn, okay. So this is the algorithmic solution, okay, by which we mean the solution that is obtained by applying some sort of discretized time integration algorithm uh, based upon the discretization that we have just spoken of, right. Uh, the algorithmic solution obtained by a uh, method to discrete, to uh, integrate the discretized, the, the, the time discretized ODE, okay. All right, so we have this notation. Um, what we need to do is um, actually first of all say what we mean by the time discretized ODE. And um, here is what we mean, okay. Now if I were to simply re uh, write out our ODE um, in the time exact form, here is what I, I, I would write it as M just as I have it up there but let me uh, explicitly put in the time, okay. Supposing we were looking at it at time Tn. Okay, so, so this would be md dot at time tn plus uh, k d at time tn equals f which potentially could also depend upon time, all right. Now when we go to a um, time discretized version of this ODE, what we will write here is the following we will write this out in the canonical form m 
Now, instead of d dot at tn, we will adopt the notation that, you know, that, uh, well, if d is our solution, we can think of d dot as sort of the velocity of the solution, right? Just, just as a term, it's really just the rate of the solution, but, but we use the, the sort of uh, canonical um, or the generalized term velocity for a rate here. And so we would write this as v, okay, indicating a velocity. Now, this is not a time exact uh, quantity, so we are going to denote it as v sub n, okay, using this sort of idea, okay, plus k d n equals f at n, okay. This is what we mean by saying that, well, here v at n uh, is an, a discretized approximation a time discretized approximation again. It's a time discretized approximation of d dot, right? dn is, of course, just as we've defined above, okay? So this is what we call, uh, what I will refer to as the discretized version of the ODE, okay? So this is the time discretized or the time discrete ODE. All right. Okay. 